ask you a question, maybe just elaborate on what you were saying, <laughs> and then we'll start. Well, what were we talking about? Um, the importance of the Dutch platform. Oh, yeah, like, uh, I think it's important because I know that there's so many people like me that are kind of like addicted to the grind and stuff, and they don't really get a chance to talk about things or share any perspective or story because there's not that many platforms here for that. So that's kind of what I was saying. Like, I appreciate that you guys do this. I really, I do. Maybe uh, talk about being obsessed with the ground. It's kind of like a life, it's like a fulfilling life goal. Like it, you're never really done. Transversely, you're never really done. <laughs> so like you're kind of, it's like an endless mission, you know? Like it's like, you can, there's always something to work on or something you can do better or something that could be better, which is good. But sometimes, to I guess to counter that, is you got to give yourself the ability to kind of just step back and just like, like absorb all the work that you've done or all the things that you've done, whether it's good or bad, and then process it and then continue to walk forward again in a different way with the new information. So like... Being addicted to the grind is good, but it comes with its weakness or pitfalls. So, I was a, I was a hype beast kid. Like you know, I'd go on hype beast often. I still do actually. I go on there often. I look at brands and be like, oh, this brand's not good for X, Y, and Z. This brand's not good for X, Y, and Z. And I became that person in my friend group. So everybody knew me as a person critiquing, which is cool. It's great to have an opinion. But I I feel like it got to the point where, I. It was consuming me, but it wasn't in like a productive way. It's consuming me. I was critiquing, oh, this brand can be better. Because I, I came into, I guess, this role from a consumer's lens. So I was buying clothes a lot. So that's why I was having such a great like time critiquing brands. And then I said to myself one day, like, you kind of need to just shut up if you never tried it before. So... Essentially, that's kind of how it started in a way. There's there's multiple like catalysts that started it. That would be one. I would say like I got into grind because like I just want to prove to myself that like I could do it too, and that when someone sees my brand on a platform, they can't say those things about me. You know, so it's a little bit weird, but <laughs> like we started this shit just trying to make a T-shirt. And like that, or like trying to make a t-shirt or make like a hoodie or whatever the fuck it might be. But it's turned into like so many hats worn, no pun intended. Like you're like, like I have people who like, they'll text me, oh, I'm going to be late today. Like that's so weird to me. Like I'm not your boss. I know I am your boss because you're my intern or you work for me or you're an employee, but like it just like it just became such something so different so fast. Not that it's bad or good, but it's just different. Like it's like I just really like want to kind of get back to like being creative and just making things because I feel like that's where I'm best. Or that's what I'm best at. And like running the business aspect of this has kind of taken me away from it. So like right now I'm thoroughly working to teach people within my network how to do that so I can just stay away from it. Cause I know like that would hurt the brand in the long term if I lose my ability to create things, you know? The people that I'm looking to acquire on my team have to, it's weird. They have to have a completely different vision than I do when they walk into the door so that we're getting new perspective, but we have to also teach them how to have the vision of what our brand is. So it's like, uh, like for example, I have an intern who is, who has never made clothing before. She's never made clothing before. It's new to her. She's interested in clothing like many people are, but like you guys could attest, being interested in clothing and starting a clothing brand are not the same thing. It's very, it's the world's own part. Like, and what I say that to say, she came in with a perspective on how things were done, not knowing how things were done. So we, were, we were, our goal was to teach her how we do things, but not lose the essence of what she thinks clothes should be made like. But some days you just, you just don't feel like doing this sometimes, you know, like it's like, and, and I don't mean in entirety, like never not doing the brand, but some days like you're just not up for it.
but I but I've been reading a lot of books on how to be a better leader and like managing my time and like realistically what I found is although you may feel that way all the leaders that we look up to today are the people who are able to deal with those things on the days that they didn't want to do them you know that's what I've kind of concluded from most of these books and stuff not to say like I'm a scholar or anything I just I read whatever I find interesting but like I found that like the real change is when the per- when you push through that wall of not wanting to be or do the thing that you're supposed to be doing because people are relying on you. If you can complete that mission, like that's what that's what puts your name in history books. That's what puts your name on, on the tip of t- people's tongues, etc. Right. So it's like it's a gift and a curse. It could be challenging on your well being, your mental well being for sure. But like you want this shit or not. I'm still working on that, actually. I, I'm still working on like how to deal with my stress, my newfound stress or any stress, like in any relationship or any business relationship. I'm still working on that. Like I don't actually have an answer on how to deal with it, but what I've been feeling in, innately I should be doing is getting back to why I started. So it's not like, I know a lot of people like, like go golfing or go swimming and do shit like that. Like, nah, like I just like consuming art, like consuming products, consuming things, critiquing things. Like I like, I found myself now, instead of going to the office all every day in the week, Mondays and Wednesdays, I'll try not to go and just stay home and just like learn about a new brand. Like I used to do when I was 17. I'm not really the type of person that like sits down and relaxes. I, I just haven't gotten there yet. Maybe I will, but just right now, like I went on my first vacation like last year with my family. That's the first time. But like prior to that, I've always been like active whenever I, I hit a city. I'm always active, just trying to learn, meet people, shake things up, get into rooms, sneak into fashion shows, etc. Like whatever it could the case may be. Cause I feel like Right now, from in your twenties, it's like your time to like, literally like abuse the time. Like you don't get this again, you know. And right now, I'm on the tail end of my twenties, so I know I can see it leaving. So I need to, I need to like finish the mission before the thirty, the thirty mark, you know. I'm free because like, every day I wake up and I chip away at something that I know is the statue that I want to build, you know. So it's like, that's kind of freedom for me. It's like it's. And again, everybody can put that in their own ways. Everyone kind of has their own perspective on on what freedom is. But for me, like I'm free now because like I have friends, for example, who are making so much more than me, but hate what they do. And like, I I would never want to trade places with that. You know what I mean? Like money is important to me, but not that important. And like, I, I take that with a grain of salt, but not that important like 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 the experience of doing this with the people that I literally grew up with is invaluable you guys really got to understand that like it's like like I don't know I, like like I, I I would consider myself free because like all my brain power goes to developing this brand and like what it can be and what I think it can be and what I know it can be sorry like it's a lot of trial and error but I'm like, I, like, I love it. I love it. You know, like, I love it. It's so fun. You know what I mean? It's so fun. Like, yeah, I know. It never gets like not weird. And I, and that chance that translates to like all the shit. Like I, the other day I was driving on Adelaide and I seen a kid in my hat. That was weird. Like I was like, and like, it was a good weird. Like, like I, my, the hairs on my body stood up. Cause I'm like, yo, fuck, fuck. Like. He liked that hat enough that I made in my brain to buy that shit. That to me blows my mind. Like, bro, like every time I get, I remember one, another time I was driving on Dundas with Miguel. We seen these two kids wearing a, my hat, a hoodie. One kid was wearing a hat and a hoodie. One kid was wearing a shirt and a hat. I don't go outside that often. So I don't see it that often. People tell me they see it a lot. I don't see it that often. I literally pulled over and said, yo, bro, those are great outfits. And the, this is the most humbling shit. The kid said, yo, what do you know about Addy though? I said, fuck, that's fire.
In my last year of university, I went to China with my homie, who, who, who was a part owner of my brand as well, for no reason. We went for no reason. And like, like it was just it. Like I lived there, we lived there for a little bit. And like, we like rode our bikes every day. It was like real, like, like grassroots shit. And like, I, it was like, to you, to use an analogy, it's like when you're at a farm and you're a pig, you know, your end goal was to be slaughtered, for example. Right. I hadn't graduated university, but I was feeling that way. It's like, yo, I'm about to graduate just to be slaughtered and killed and made into somebody's dinner, basically. I know that's kind of like graphic, but but like in the hypothetical way of becoming a cookie cutter, I was an accountant student, so I was going to be a CPA, et cetera, go on to do this shit. And I was actually pretty good at accounting. It's actually pretty fun. This is a misconception. But when I went on that trip, what I realized was more so like, Every day we'd wake up and we had all the time in the world. And I was like, damn, like, I wish this can be forever. And obviously, like, that's wishful thinking. You, like, life is work and play, so you can't do nothing, right? But, like, how can you find a way to blend these things? And I hadn't started the brand at the time, but it's weird because my other business partner, Xavier, started screen printing on shirts. And like and doing embroidery on like shirts from Walmart and just writing random like phrases and shit on it. And like I never we ne- I never thought it was like that amazing, but it was something because like at the point in time I was critiquing a lot of other people's brands. So I was in my head saying, Oh, like this will never work because it's not good. This will never work because this is whatever, 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 right? And he just he wasn't coming on the trip, but he gave me the product, it was like a tote bag and a black shirt. And it had like, I don't even remember what it said. And he's like, yo, when you go there, like shoot like a campaign for me. Like I just, I hadn't picked up a camera before in my life, but my cousin had just gave me one just to go with. It's like a, like the rebel, like a, like a Canon rebel, like the most basic shit. And I was like, okay, cool. Like we could do that. And then we went there. We didn't know anybody not a soul. So we went to this, went to this nightclub and I found these, t- these two people and I just started talking to them. Granted, everyone obviously doesn't speak English, but this person happened to be from Toronto as well. So he's like, yo, like we're going back and forth. I'm like, yo, I'm looking for models to shoot this campaign. He's like, yeah, cool. I'll do it. Let's do it tomorrow. So I found these other girls in the same night and told them all to meet me back at our Airbnb the next day. I didn't know if they were coming. The numbers weren't working. They were all weird numbers. They showed up. I shot it. And like, I'm not gonna say like it was like a boss guy painting, but like it was cool or whatever. And then what I really took from it was after I shot it, like I just felt so electric. I was literally like in the Airbnb and I just immediately started editing the photos. I didn't even know how to edit photos. I just had Photoshop on my thing because I fucking pirated it. I didn't know how to edit photos. I just started editing the photos. And like, I didn't want to leave the Airbnb. I'm in fucking Hong Kong. Like, I literally have the world to see. I'm like, damn. Okay. I got back to Toronto and I showed Exit. And he was like, and he was like, it's my homie. So he's going to say, yo, that was amazing, obviously. But then I like, I looked at him and I said like, yo, bro, like, we, we posted it on Instagram and shit. The brand at the time was called Tanel, which is his middle name. So I was just like a creative director of Tanel, of my homie's brand, right? Creative director, who is it, right? And I said to him, I said, yo, bro, like, you weren't there, but like, want to do this for real? And he's like, bet. And then I said, yo, the only way I'll do it for real, I remember this day, we were sitting at my mom's uh, um, kitchen table, on my mom's kitchen table. I said, the only way we'll do it for real is if you, if you sign me to a lifetime deal. So I just ripped a piece, piece of the paper off of the corner. He wrote, Nico, lifetime deal, add Edom, sign here. And I signed it.
the brand had started and we started making things and it was cool. Like it was a headache though. Cause I didn't know, I didn't even know how to make anything. I'm just making shit. First I started printing on blanks. And then I remember the first blank I blank, blank I printed on, I said, we can't release this. It sucks. He's like, why? It's fine. I'm like, yo, we got to make our own t-shirt. We got to get our own fabric. And he's like, yo, like you're trying to take it to the next shit. I'm like, yo, bro, what are we, what are we doing this for? So like literally that's why like, it's taken so long for my brand, my for our brand to like build this foundation. Like, if I'm being completely uh, like transparent, if if I was to use blanks from the beginning, our brand would be so far already. But like, I'm I kind of just I know myself. The critique kid in me would wouldn't rate it. So I had to start by like learning the hard way. So that was the first leg of it. Like, how, how long do you niggas have, though? That's the thing. You know what I mean? We ran into Spencer, who's also another designer in Toronto. And he was with Miguel. And I didn't know Miguel. He's very reserved. If you know him now, you, this is like a freak accident. There's no way somebody meets him and talks to him. Like, he's not that type of person. But, like, my, like my personality, I'm going to talk to whoever I want, right? So I'm with Spen I'm with, I met, had met Spencer. And Spencer had asked for a ride back to his uh, studio. And we're like, okay, cool. So we all got in. It's, it's a two-door coupe. There's five of us. Spencer's 6'5". Joseph's 6'2". X, X, X is 6'1". And I'm like 5'7". Five, like five, Miguel's 5'7". It's like, there's no space. So we're crammed. And I'm just, I don't know this guy. So I just start talking to him. Like, yo, what do you do? He's like, oh, I'm a fashion student at like uh, George Brown. So I'm like, all right, cool. Like, yo, take my number. I'm, I'm, I do fashion. <laughs> I do fashion. Take my number. I took his number. And I, I saved it. It's still in my phone the same right now. Miguel, fashion student. I said, okay, bet. So a few months pass and we, we get those things we were working on with Joseph and we release it. By God's grace, somehow, it ends up on Hypebeast. To me, that young kid, that is the, the epitome. Like Vogue could never at the time, you know? That's Hypebeast, bro. So then I'm like, okay, cool. Like, this is crazy. Like, I can't believe this is happening. What's the next steps? How do I get the product to the people? How do I sell the product, etc.? I didn't know how to do none of that. I just made the lookbook, put it out. Never thought about like selling it. Now people are asking to buy it. Oh, how the fuck am I going to do that? And then um, I had patterns that I had paid for from this, uh, this manufacturer in, in Toronto. I was developing with them. And then I took the patterns. And like I, I went through Kijiji and like look went to so many people asking them, yo, can you show me what to do next? I didn't I had no idea how to do anything. And then I, I was literally sitting. Uh, it was in my last year, my last semester of university. I'm sitting in my room and I'm like, yo, fuck, like this shit's gonna end. I don't know like the next step. How do I get to the next step? So I'm just scrolling through my phone. And I, I just like started, I just typed the term fashion in my phone and Miguel fashion student came up. So I just texted him. I said, oh, I remember this kid. So I texted him. I said, yo, um, me and my homies have a brand. Like I'm super like, like informal. Like, yo, me and my homies have a brand. Uh, we need, we need somebody to help us like uh, make the, make the patterns and make the products, etc." He's like, okay, cool. Uh, can you come uh, meet me downtown? He had just moved downtown a month before that text. And he's like, he's like, yo, do you live downtown? I lived in St. Catharines for school, but I told him I lived downtown. So I took the Greyhound with all the patterns <laughs> to his house and said, yeah, I just live like at Queen and Spadina. He didn't know anything, but I'm like, yeah, I live downtown. I just wanted to be cool. Like, you know, like I, that's like a downtown thing. I just want people to like fuck with me. He lives in like a, a small little apartment started working on it. And I'm like, yo, do you mind if I like, just like, like watch you do this? And he said, no, cause he's a super private person. I feel like I was probably the first person to ever step foot in his place, literally. And he's like, no. And I'm like, all right, cool. I respected his space. Then I, then I left his house and I texted my, I texted X, I said, yo, I found this guy. I'm about to finesse this nigga to show me how to make patterns and clothes. He's an X at bet. So then I went back to pick the patterns up because he had graded them for me. And I said, yo, bro, I will pay you to make all my patterns. I'll pay you whatever you want. I had no money at the time. I don't even know how else to pay this nigga. I'll pay you whatever you want. The only caveat, you have to let me watch how you do it. And he was like giving me pushback. 
I'm like, yo, please. Like, I'm looking at this guy dead in his eyes. Like, yo, please. Like, and that is kind of where the NBA started. I spent a whole year going to this guy's house every day for eight hours. We worked from like six to like 3 a.m. Every day. After, he would come after work. I would come from St. Catharines or Brampton if, if it was at my mom's house. He doesn't even know this, but when it was too late, I would just sleep in the car in the parking lot on Dundas because like I was too tired to drive home. And then I will drive home in the morning. And he literally taught me literally everything you can tangibly fit into a year's period of, te of technical and pattern making. And like, that's why like, a lot of my peers in this vicinity feel like, may feel like my brand is advanced because I literally did a crash course on how to make clothes. He literally taught me the whole thing. And, and we became friends in the process. We bonded out over, he's a really weird guy, like very reserved, super quiet. You don't, like he's, he, he looks like he watches like CNN and shit. But we bonded, we bonded over like Chief Keef songs. And like, he's a, he's a diehard fan, Cameron and Sosa. I was like, damn, I did not expect that shit. So that's, that's how we became uh, really close. And that was like, I guess the second uh, pivotal moment prior to like getting there. And then the next pivotal moment is like, okay, I have a team, well, I have a homie. I have information, I need money, I need money. So I literally went, and my girl was working at this company called Vend. It's like a, it's like a Shopify style company, right? And tell me if this, this is getting too long, but my girl went to, was working there and I was able to get a job in sales there. Turns out I'm really good at sales. I worked there for eight months. I racked up a lot of commission and I quit. <laughs> and I quit and I have never looked back since. Literally, that is the third pivotal moment. Like I remember the day I quit, I had taken a trip to LA to meet with a, a distributor. Uh, one of my homies, John, he, he has like a, a PR company. He does like a lot of, a lot of brands that we, everybody would know. And he was like, he's just been a mentor the kind of, so I just asked him questions and he tells me things. I went, I went for a meeting and then um, we went to Soho Warehouse for a meeting and He's, it was like such a, like a, like a great learning experience. Like I, I came away from it. So like inspired, I literally left, went around the corner, called my manager and said, yo, I'm not coming back. And like, I, it's been that way since.